I think because it is an act of rebellion and rebellion is a necessary thing in our society. Otherwise it goes stagnant. Otherwise it, it, you know, no one's questioning the status quo and everyone turns into sheep. There has to be rebellion when things and the population and the masses feel that it must be so. And I think that art has taken, was taking a, a, a terrible uh, a direction that the masses did not like. It was just for the elite, for the cultured few. It be, was becoming a commodity, just like the stock market. It didn't matter what it looked like. It just mattered the artist's career and that the value was going to go up on some piece of crap that they kept in storage because it was too hideous to hang in their own home. So is that art, really? And it's just like, you know, splashes of color that have no meaning. It's just a matter of the artist's career and would the value go up. Mm. So, and it isn't a context or of what it is, it's just who you know. So the value goes up and, and that's not art. And it was only being appreciated by the cultured few, and I mean by the 1% who has the time to go to museums and galleries and frequent these, these establishments. Certainly my family didn't, and just, you know, working class, just trying to make ends meet and, and such. Um, they did not have time to go to all these establishments and institutions and appreciate fine art in its context where it is. Why can't art be out in the street for the masses, made by the masses? So street art became that answer. What was the question? Uh, the question is whether you think graffiti is largely pe positive or negative. Um, and again, going back to the, to, to the nature of rebellion, this, this country was founded on rebellion. Those free thinkers are our founding fathers you know, decided to rebel against Britain because the masses um, wanted it so. So I believe that graffiti is important. It serves a, a purpose for those extreme sports dudes that need to go out and paint things that don't belong to them no matter what age they are. They just want the thrill and excitement and the adrenaline. They feed off it like firemen and policemen who need that adrenaline jolt to know that they are alive. Like, like extreme sports dudes, they leap off mountains or whatever because I, I, I don't know why. They need to feel alive so they almost barely die or whatever. They need the adrenaline. You can't give them permission walls. You can't give them daytime stuff. It's not the same kind of, of, of rush. So there are guys who keep it pure, keep it real. They're still doing freight trains. They go from city to city. And that's where graffiti is still alive and well. It is alive and well in other countries as well. There's subway trains painted and trolleys and all kinds of stuff. Guys in every corner of the world are, are breaking the law and just with paint. We're not killing anyone. We're not robbing anyone. It's just a little paint, mm -hmm. you know, it's not... But it is the act of rebellion that is important. It'll give young people that opportunity to sow some wild oats. That's an old fashioned saying of, you know, you got to get your wild out while you're young before you settle down and get married and just chill later on. You're going to want to chill, but if you need to do that. I had two sisters. They did not feel the need to go out and be wild and rebel and climb out the window with a bunch of crazy dudes and go do crazy stuff. They, you know, okay, my, one of my sisters tagged along once or twice because the guys were awfully, awfully good looking. Hmm. But aside from that, it was crazy madness. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think it, it did for you, this, this act of rebellion and this freedom of expression, uh, when you started? You're just getting to know the world in an era filled with art and culture, in a place that's considered by many around the world to be one of the epicenters of art and culture, the birth of this movement. What do you think it did for you? Well, as, as a very young one, it took a very shy girl and, 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 and brought me out. I was always even too shy to lift my hand in class when I knew the answers to everything. So I wouldn't even speak in class. I was really shy. And, and, and then when I kissed my first boy at 13 and started smoking weed at 13, and then I became blossomed into a whole new person. Well, my grades went down. I started cutting school, hanging out with a different crowd, learning graffiti. You know, it, it, it gave me confidence, it gave me courage. I developed a, a, perhaps a second personality, one that of a tough girl and a street thug rather than a well-brought-up young lady that I was. So, you know, because I, uh, I guess art school, well-brought-up young ladies, wasn't as acceptable underground. So I had to develop a street thug kind of an attitude and, you know, really, really mean and, and, and cruel and, and vicious and, and all of that wonderful stuff. Yeah. It's, it seems like in that time period, um, like if you partake in these um, 
crowds and these groups, like your chances of getting into situations where your life is at risk seems really high. But it's funny how um, being also in these groups and knowing the street smarts also saves you in a lot of situations, like you said, like you know how to fill out the streets, you know how to fill out people, you know where to go, what like what to look out for. So in a way, it is like a positive thing to, you know, have the balance, like you said, have like a second personality that like knows about that instead of just being stuck in one world where you don't know about that life, but it does exist and you can't deny it, especially in that, you know, time period. Um, so the way I say that um, graffiti was our education and what it taught us is a lot of, is, is confidence, it taught us courage, it taught us no nonsense, it taught us how to get the job done despite fear. Your knees could be shaking, your heart in your throat, but you're still creating, you're still doing straight lines. This is like, you know, boot camp for artists. It's like when they teach you how to shoot and you're a good marksman and you hit the target, that's great. But then they send you to war and you're like, you know, people are screaming, your body gets shot, you're slipping on blood, you know, you're shaking like hell and you still have to try to hit your target. That's how boot camp for artists is, trying to do graffiti underground. You're scared to death, but you still gotta represent and do your thing. And very, very few artists ever have to risk their lives and work with such fear that they keep on going. And then I've heard about like the plein air painters. Mm. These are these crazy cats who stand with a, with an easel in the middle of an icy stream with bears walking around because they need to paint some scenic nonsense or another. And that is crazy. <laughs> the extreme weather, the, the, the predators, they could die just trying to do a little oil painting. Yeah. Okay. Okay, whatever turns you on. So, you know, and then there's the graffiti writers. So kids have died, and we know that going in. We are trained by masters. We know the history. We learn what, what, what was what, how, who died, how they died, and don't let that happen to you. Hmm. 